Welcome to 2018 USA Fall Classic as we come to you live here from Turney Field in Sparks, Maryland, where we have the reigning world champion, Team USA, taking on the reigning national champion, Yale Bulldogs. Scott Jackson along with Matt DeSilva. We're excited to bring you some great lacrosse today. Of course, this is the first of a, a doubleheader, but we'll stick with this game first and start with the uh, reigning national champions, Matt, and the Yale Bulldogs, and what are the keys for them today? Yeah, Yale coming off obviously a very special season, and what a treat here today, defending national champions against the defending world champion ch champions, and this is absolutely a measuring stick for the Bulldogs. You know, how do you get over that championship hangover? How about playing the best team in the world? Yale needs to find its weaknesses. You know, that's that's part of the part of the discovery process of fall ball. Specifically, right now, they're very thin in the long pole position, and checking egos at the door. Not a problem with this Yale program. It's very much a blue collar ethos that they adopt. Well, let's take a look at some of the uh, key players today for Yale and for this season. And you start with defenseman Chris Fake. Chris Fake just took the NCAA by storm in his freshman year. One thing comes to mind, that regular season game against Albany when he limited Tohoka Nanakoke and Connor Fields combined to just one point. Andy Shea says he looks better than ever coming here this fall. He's going to be a real leader of the squad. All right, and on the offensive side, of course, uh, Jackson Morrill, who is the uh, leading goal scorer returning this year, a junior attackman. How about this experience playing just steps from where your grandfather your great-grandfather, your grandfather, and your father are enshrined in the National Lacrosse Hall of Fame. Big-time lacrosse family, and he's stepping into those shoes quite admirably. 40 goals a season ago will come to mind. That seven-goal performance against UMass in the first round of the NCAA tournament. All right, let's move on to Team USA and uh, get some keys for what the uh, men want to do today. This is kind of an awkward time frame coming off such a monumental experience in Israel, that dramatic gold medal victory over Canada. So as we pivot forward, you know you have the, blue, the blueprint. Who fits within that? The party starters at midfield, you know, this team, this particular outfit is a little bit light on guys that can carry the ball behind the goal. So I expect a lot of initiation coming out of the midfield with guys like Connor Kelly, Miles Jones, Mike Chan and Chuck. And then we get Baptiste versus Ireland versus Erlen, sorry, Trevor Baptiste, TD Erlen at the faceoff X 2.0. What an epic matchup in the NCAA tournament last year. Two of the best at their craft. Well, let's move on to uh, some players to watch for Team USA and look at uh, number four of the attackman, Ryan Brown. Ryan Brown was lights out in Israel, as some of you may have seen. 25 goals on just 50 shots. That's unheard of for someone with that kind of volume to shoot at 50%. You know, he was kind of on the border to make this team going into the 2018 World Championship, and boy, did he reward their faith. Such an out, such an absolutely phenomenal shooter. And the uh, LSM uh, number 28, Michael Earhart. Michael Earhart was the MVP of the World Championship, the first defensive player to earn that honor since Dave Petromala back in the early 90s. And there was no mistake about it. He was the best player on the field in Israel, whether it was on ground balls between the lines, some lockdown defense, and it's great to see him back out here wanting to be about part of the process as we rebuild to 2022. All right, we had an opportunity earlier to catch up with uh, the head coach, the Yale Bulldogs, Andy Shea. Scott Jackson, Matt DeSilva standing by here with the head coach of Yale, Andy Shea, national champions, and here obviously uh, a little exhibition today. Coach, what are you looking to get out of playing uh, Team USA today? Uh, you know, I think we're just trying to figure out who we are a little bit. Uh, we've had a limited number of practices, and... Um, you know, honestly, we haven't even given much look at the international rules with only six practices. So, um, you know, I think we're just trying to see who we are and uh, hopefully we can play the way we, uh, we are used to playing. Um, and if we can do that, uh, it's kind of immaterial what else happens. If any program has the culture to overcome a post-championship hangover, <laughs> it seems Yale would be the one. Well, we hope so. How have you addressed that this fall? Uh, you know, we just we talk to guys about, you know, making sure that they're not paying attention to anything more than the next few feet in front of them you know and uh that that comes down to how we train and and how we how hard they work in the in the off season um you know they can constantly see where they are and and if they just keep their eye on that uh then hopefully we'll be okay big news this off season was the transfer of td erlin yep. from albany to your yale program you mentioned that was kind of a surprise but a pleasant one at that yeah oh yeah well uh, very pleasant surprise he's been great um you know, he's acclimated really well. He's, he's, he's uh, obviously done well, you know, at practice, and, and uh, he seems to really like it a lot. Erlin versus Baptiste. We're looking forward to that today. 
Obviously, it's in a fall setting, a different scenario, but still, over there, so two be of the good. best, two yes. of the best, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be a good scrap. You know, I think that, you know, if it were just one-on-one, -on -one, that'd be one thing. I think we're, we, you know, we try and be a unit out there, so it's going to be the wings as well, and some of the best wing guys that have ever played are going to be out there, so it's a little, it's going to be a daunting task. Coach Shea, thank you for your time. Thank Coach Shea, thank you. And the coach today on the opposite sideline, of course, the head coach of Team USA, John Donowski, who, of course, matched up with Andy Shea in the national championship uh, over the summer and then won the world championship for Team USA. All right, here at Tourney Field, our pleasure to bring in the head coach of uh, Team USA, John Donowski. Uh, first of all, congratulations on being a national champion. Thank you. World was, champion, excuse yeah, me. It was, it, was, uh, it was an incredible experience for all of us, you know, who had the opportunity to, to first of all, travel to the Middle East and Israel and... Um, and, and to participate uh, in, in the tournament. It was a thrill. You've had a couple of months now, Coach, to decompress off of that. What do you know in retrospect? What have you learned? How have you been able to reflect on the experience? Well, you know, it was always, I, I think our, um, our intuition was correct in that uh, the goal wasn't to pick the 23 best lacrosse players. It was to pick the 23 right players. Um, who were really tough-minded individuals. And I don't mean tough being physical or you know, running through a pack, but I mean uh, being able to be disciplined and put, putting winning in the team above everything else. And, um, and I th and think that we were right in that it took that in order to, to come out with two one-goal victories where the margin of victory is so slim. Uh, you know, easily could have lost the last game. Uh, Canada hits a couple of crossbars, and, and if they hit those shots, um, you know, we don't win. But, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, it was a great experience with the 23 right guys. How do you pivot now? This is the first time in recent memory that a, a standing coaching staff has come back in total to coach a team in another setting. What are you trying to get out of today? Well, you know, you got you to gotta move on, you know, and I think the, the goal is we'll have seven guys, you know, who have been in the, who, who were there this summer, and, and their job is to, to let the other guys know that this is how it gets done. Uh, this is not about branding. This is not about personal interest. This is about the team. And, uh, and this is where it begins. Uh, they're not in shape. You know, I, I expect it to, the, the play to be ragged uh, for most of the time. But in terms of um, their energy and, and what they're trying to accomplish, uh, that's, that's the goal, to get that started for the next cycle. Well, good luck today, Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, guys. All right, national anthem being played. Teams lined up, looking ready to go, and uh, should be a great day of lacrosse, Matt. As uh, again, we see uh, a Yale team as a uh, little beat up, uh, but at the same time, still got a lot of talent on this roster. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking at that third attack spot that right now. We got Joseph Sessa penciled in there. Expect him to run a bunch of midfield though as well. So we might get a good look at Matt Brandau, highly touted freshman. The number two freshman class in the country, according to Inside Lacrosse, coming to New Haven this fall. So expect them to get a lot of exposure. Yeah, down to eight poles uh, due to injuries. You got a soccer player. You got a few other circumstances going on with uh, Andy Shea's team. But they're, they're eight poles right now. And they've got Brian, uh, you know, Brian Ward, who's moving over, a former uh, short midi, playing a little uh, long stick for them now as well. Yeah, there's been a fair amount of attrition at that position for Yale. So look for them to get a lot of guys We're rotating them through. If you take a look now at the USA starters, and boy, pick your poison with this group. As I mentioned earlier with, uh, with Coach Sanowski, it was really impressive to see how many guys that didn't make the team that went over to Israel that are here today suiting up for the red, white, and blue. Yeah, they do uh, have a lot of talent. And again, I think the, the place everybody's going to have their eyes on here and these uh, gentlemen have battled before, but uh, obviously T.D. Erlin from uh, Yale, who transferred over from Albany in the face-off circle against Trevor Batiste to get this uh, game started here momentarily. And 
Erlen, uh, for those that don't know, was the, the guy when it came to face-offs last year, set, set all kinds of records for Division I face-off percentage, actually had three perfect face-off games last year uh, at Albany as well. And uh, Coach Andy Say calling it the biggest transfer in NCAA history, at least per his memory. He kind of kicked it back to Del Dressel back in the early 1980s, going from Harvard to Johns Hopkins. Dressel, of course, a National Lacrosse Hall of Famer here. And, and who can blame him? I mean, this is a game changer for the Bulldogs and a, really an embarrassment of riches. They yeah. go from Connor Mackey last year. He graduates in steps T.D. Erlin. And, oh, by the way, they got one of the top face-off guys in the recruiting class in Joe Newman. So Yale is dealing from a position of strength at the X. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, should be a lot of fun to watch that today. And, look, Yale uh, has only had a handful of practices at this point in their fall session. I mean, they, they're the team that normally, you know, doesn't really kind of eases into the fall. So this this will be a really good check of, of kind of where they are. You know, usually Coach uh, Shave is sharing with us. They're trying to get in shape this time of year. But now you're thrown into a game against Team USA. This is going to be a real good test for them early. Yeah, and Yale especially treats the summer a little bit differently than some other programs in that they don't want their guys running. They lift all summer. That bigger, stronger, faster mantra that they try to adopt. And, and you know, so they come in a little bit not in shape in terms of running shape. They've tried to gear it up a little bit for this scrimmage because this should be an up and down battle. Yeah, no doubt about it. So we're about to get here started. Uh, a little cloudy today. There was a little mist in the air earlier, some fog uh, real early today uh, for those of us that uh, got out here real early this morning, but it did lift. So good day for lacrosse. Not going to be too hot and uh, packed house here as well at Turney Field. So it should be exciting. And again, Trevor Batiste, uh, is the uh, Denver product, is going to uh, take on T.D. Erlin, number six, of course, who is the uh, transfer we were just talking about from Albany. And right away we have an infraction on Erlin, and uh, Team USA will uh, start with the ball. And this game is being played by international rules, so that includes on the faceoff where there can be some movement before the whistle. So not sure there what they got Erlin on. Miles However, Jones uh, gets the touch for Team USA. Possession of the U.S. Jojo Morasco right now being sized up by Brian Tevlin. Morasco's going to probe a little bit, drops it off. Around Team USA, the first goal of the game just like that. Marcus Holman for Team USA. Marcus Holman was the fourth attackman out of the box for the U.S. over in Israel and he was like lightning in a bottle. Again, that selfless ethos of this team. He wasn't a starter, wound up being the second leading scorer for the team, taking advantage of his matchup, coming off the screen, and dunking it. Yeah, Morasco sent him a little, little screen there, and uh, he took advantage of it. So we'll see if they can get a uh, face off without an infraction this time between Erline and Baptiste. And again, it's gonna be Team USA with possession. Baptiste with a clean win there. And that's a tough matchup for the Yale defenseman, Douglas Pula, making his first start with a pole in his hands. We mentioned the attrition there for tough. Yale. He's the, uh, a converted midfielder, and he's got to guard Marcus Holman. Yeah, not an easy assignment uh, for your first time <laughs> out as a poleman, as you mentioned. Connor Buzik with the uh, attack and loses the ball, loses possession. Down Chris Flake's going to Chris Fake's going to pick it up, rather. Oh, big hit, loose ball. Going to go to Team USA. A lot of contact here early. A lot of physical play. Fake's going to try to get the clear for Yale. Here the Yale sideline approving. Excuse me, that's Chris Fake now. Taking it up with a clear. Got a penalty on Team USA. Yeah, an interference call on that possession. So Yale going to see its first offensive possession of the game. Big time ground ball after all that physical encounter by Brian Ward of Yale. Uh, t unforced turnover there, Joseph Sessa with a low pass and uh, Team USA with possession. Ward un unable to get an opportunity there on offense. You'll see a lot of Ward today, number 42 in blue. He's another converted midfielder for the Bulldogs. Coach Andy Shea highlighted him as someone who has been the surprise of the fall of the fall ball, perhaps out of necessity. Former third line midfielder getting a lot of run today. 
Team USA does get it over. Georgia Morasco hold it, wait for the line change here. That's Miles Jones with the shot and the save. On the Yale's attack, the Yale numbers. coming the other way. They do have some numbers. They're going to get a pass and a shot, and we have an equalizer just like that from the Yale Bulldogs. Matt Brandell, the freshman. Not a bad way to get your fall season started for the freshman. Yeah, welcome to the league rookie, right? This starts with a save on the other end by Jack Starr with a crisp outlet pass for the fast break. And on the other end, Jackson Morrow playing the swivel, finding Brandau on the doorstep, and it's a tie game. Greg Gerlilin is now the uh, new faceoff man for Team USA. TD, though, uh, wins it this time for Yale. Oh, no, an unforced error there. And Marcus Holman's going to pick it up for Team USA, although they're going to turn it right back over. Loose ball picked up by Yale and the clear. The team's having some problems here early. Again, it is fall ball for teams have not played a lot together, practiced a lot. So you might see a little bit of that. Jackson Morrill dropping it off there to Dan Angelis. That's Jack Ty now handling it for the Yale Bulldogs. That goal's got to feel good for the freshman, Matt Brandau. Ted Frost swings it around the back side. Good movement here by Yale as they're trying to get their first or get their uh, opportunity to take a lead here. Turf's probably a little slippery out there, as you mentioned, the morning mist, seeing some guys hit the deck here early. Still looking for an opening here. Team USA with some good defense. Yeah, this is interesting for Yale to try to play its offense by the international rules, considering everyone in college is trying to adapt to the 80-second shot clock, which is coming to the game. Not in play today. So Yale going to play a little bit of a possession game. Ted Forst, you saw a moment ago with the, with the pass. Again, Team USA with some tight defense here early on Yale. Dana Jealous looking for some space. Drops it off. Yale contends, continues to be patient with it, as you said. They haven't had a lot of practice time, a lot of work on some of these offensive sets. Shot wide from uh, Yale. We're gonna, Yale's going to keep possession. Great hustle there. The exaggerated times to make sure they got that ball off the shot. That's that blue-collar ethos that I talked about in the pregame. They are known for chasing every single ball to the end line and sideline and sometimes selling out at the end, sometimes even when it's not entirely necessary. <laughs> but it was appreciated by the Yale faithful that have come up for the game. That's Jack Ty heading towards the goal, dumps it off. Another great crisp pass in the front and a goal. That one's going to Matt Brandau once again. Bulldogs with some nice tic-tac-toe passing there. Take the 2-1 lead. Matt Brandau came to play today. Played his high school ball just down the road at Boys Latin School. Looking to earn his spot within this Yale starting attack. And he's just finding space and finishing shots, as he does right there. His twin brother, by the way, is going to be a Georgetown um, player for them. His half-brother, Tim, also played lacrosse at Bucknell, so family of lacrosse players, as often is the case. And a uh, win there for Team USA. Well, now, spoke too soon. Win there for Team USA on the faceoff. Good to see Greg Gorenli and the veteran out here again, rocking the red, white, and blue. He's been retired from the MLL for the last season. Will Haas, good job getting it across. You've yeah. seen a lot of guys hit the deck. Holman there for Team USA falling down as well. If you saw Garenlian over in Israel, I mean, he prepared with such intensity. 
this experience meant so much to him, and he's also a mentor to Trevor Baptiste. So we see that continuing here today with both suiting up at the X. Chan and Chuck, Michael Chan and Chuck drops it in. He holds it. Team USA trying to get organized here on offense. Marcus Holman, who is working hard in the first goal of the game. Shot from Team USA, block and save. Big save there by Jack Starr. Yale on the counter, going the other direction. It's the Bulldogs, it's Brian Tevlin. Gonna swing it around, Jackson Morrill. Gonna send it out front, Christian Kropp. That was a nice job by the Yale defenseman Douglas Pula getting his stick into Buzik's midsection, altering the trajectory of the shot and affecting how much power he could get on it. Uh, another turnover there by Yale. Team USA now going to try to get a transition. They do. The connection passes here is Team USA now on the move. Always fun to see the poles think about offense. Didn't work out so good. Here's Starr running up the field. A little bit of an errant pass handled, though, by Yale. Douglas Pula with a nice job there to corral that pass. It was, was a little errant. But Yale now in the, trying to get organized here on offense. Yeah, Matt Dunn on the USA side trying to make a little too much happen. And Ryan Brown unable to handle it down low. So we expect a little bit of that today. You know, these guys are out of practice. This particular group hasn't played together for a long time. Sean Cutton there going towards the net, dives in, and no goal, and we're going to get a flag. It looks like, what's the call here? Was he in the crease? Looks like it's going to be a push well, with a push possession instead. on Will Haas with a push from behind. Probably saved a goal with that penalty. So that's going to be uh, Yale now with the advantage here. First uh, main event we've seen in this game. And how about the moxie of these Yale freshmen? Sean Cutton just propelling himself sure into did. the goal. We've already seen a couple of goals today from Matt Brandau. So the freshman class for the Bulldogs showing their presence today. No doubt there's Brandau out there on the, with this group as well with the ball now. Drops it in. Uh, Yale's moving the ball quickly. Shot wide, but they'll keep possession. It's going to be picked up quickly there by Jack Ty. <laughs> Michael Earhart out defending for Team USA. Again, Yale with a shot. Rip. Big save there. Tim Muller, nice job for Team USA, and he took it. He's, he's wincing a little bit. That's, feel that one. We're going to get a quick timeout, too, to check the goalie. Yeah, it's Brian Phipps back there with the save. He was another guy that was a part of that process with Team USA all the way through the training team phase. Yeah, that was a tough one that uh, Phipps took there <laughs> for sure. There you get a shot of the Team USA World Championship team, the 9-8 win in the gold medal game. And we got the stat this week from John Donowski where they had four turnovers. That was it in that game. Two on offense, two on defense. That was a really well-played game. Intense, physical affair, as USA-Canada always is. A little bit of controversy in the second half that I, I won't get into here. You know, it wound up being one on a goal by Tom Schreiber with one second remaining. And USA prevails. All right, Yale, once again on offense. Bulldogs have kind of dictated here uh, after falling down one nothing. Joseph Sessa. The ball for Yale. Being defended by Larkin Kemp of Team USA. Yale doing a good job of redefending after the faceoffs. You know, Team USA has yeah. won three of four. Jack Ty. They can run, dumps it off, shot, and oh, blocked. Looked like he might have hit the post there. Matt Brandau was going for the hat trick already in the first quarter. Didn't quite get it. Here goes Team USA on the transition. It's Miles Jones. He's looking for some help, and he might just take it himself. Dumps it off, shot, goal from Team USA. Matt Cavanaugh. 
from Miles Jones. Nice transition offense there from Team USA to equalize it at two all. How about Joseph Sessa? All five foot five, spitfire of a midfielder for Yale, trying to take the body to Miles Jones, <laughs> who's six five and built like a freight train. Nice, selfless play by Jones to give up that rock despite the favorable, favorable matchup. He finds Kavanaugh on the doorstep, and we got a tie game. And yeah, we've got Trevor Batiste back out to take the face off against TD Erline once again. And yeah, we got two all game here, under two minutes in the first quarter. Batiste is going to win this one. He gets it off to er Earhart. Earhart's going to take a run at it, going to dump it off. Good passing by Team USA. Oh, back to Earhart. In. Could be a turnover here. See who gets the loose ball. Looked like Yale was going to get the loose ball. Now they're going to call the push on Yale. <laughs> and Kavanaugh, another player who embraces the yeah. contact. He always finds himself in the middle of those types of scrums. That time taking the body, drawing the penalty, and giving Team USA the possession. And Connor Kelly's out there for Team USA with Morasco. And uh, 37, that's uh, Procario who just moved the ball. Of course, uh, number one, Marcus Holman out there as well right now. Jojo Morasco right now with the ball. Probin drops it back off. Matt Cavanaugh. They want them to know that he's a lefty. They're yelling at the Yale bench. Connor Kelly picks it up for Team USA. So they move it back around. It's Ryan Brown attacking from the left side. Ryan Brown the shot. A little wide. Team USA though will keep possession. It's going to be quickly picked up by Jojo Morasco. He was trying to get the restart a little faster than the refs wanted him to, so they're going to make him come back over here. You can hear the Yale bench with our microphones really well coaching from the sideline there. Team USA with a shot and a save from Starr once again. Great hustle by Starr to keep possession for Yale. What a great play. Second the time this quarter we've seen Yale win back a possession on a dive to the boundary. Impressive, too, especially after the Kavanaugh sh shot that he saved to be able to do that. It's Christian Kropp who took it over at 34. Now uh, number four is uh, Dan Angelis, and that is going to do it for the end of the uh, first quarter. Entertaining first quarter. We've got a two-all game between Team USA and the Yale Bulldogs. We'll continue with our coverage here on U.S. Lacrosse. Our primary goal is to positively impact every child exposed to the sport. If they're having fun while they're learning, that's what it's all about. Today, we're going to put it all together. Let's go out and continue what you started. It's having the opportunity to now inspire the next generation. I mean, that's the dream, right? USA Fall Classic here in Sparks, Maryland. I want to thank our sponsors, Nike, Warrior, and STX for their sponsorship of this game and of this Fall Classic. Of course, later on, it'll be Team USA Women against the national champion James Madison Dukes. Scott Jackson, Matt DeSilva here at Tourney Field with you. Entertaining first quarter, two all uh, here and some uh, fast-paced action from both teams. A lot of, a lot of hustle and... You know, after they worked out some of the cobwebs, Matt, I thought both teams got in a good flow. No question about it. You know, these are two teams that are typically more buttoned up and pre prefer to be such in a competition of this nature. They do have to shake off some of the cobwebs here in this fall exhibition setting, but they are fiery competitors at that. We saw a lot of physicality in that first quarter. I would expect that to continue. Yeah, Matt Brandow, the freshman whose great-grandfather, grandfather, and father are in the Hall of Fame, which is literally steps from us, uh, Matt, with the two goals 
in the uh, first quarter for uh, Yale. And Jackson Morrill, who we, of course, highlighted in the open, has had two assists so far as well. And for Team USA, you had a goal for Marcus Holman and Matt Cavanaugh. And that's uh, how they've got their scoring going. But this has, again, been, you know, for, for a set of rules that does not have a shot clock, they don't need one anyway, it looks like, because these teams are, are motivated to uh, to get some possessions and get some shots in here. No, and there's been, been a fair, fair amount of interchange between the restraining lines that has helped make this a little bit more of a faster tempo game. You, you mentioned Morrill and, and the Hall of Fame legacy that he has here. He's, the one, he's doing it as a distributor today. He's got two assists on both of Matt Brandau's goals. A little bit of an MIAA connection there with uh, Brandau of Boys Latin and Jackson Morrill out of McDonough right down the road here. All right, TD Erline back on the faceoff circle for Yale. A new faceoff man for Team USA, Brendan Fowler. Uh, we'll take one. Of course, uh, former Duke standout and uh, playing professionally in New York now. Fowler, of course, of course uh, was a workhorse in his days at Duke for Coach John Donowski, including Olay. that championship season where he set a record for single-season faceoffs taken. Will Haas quickly gets it up for Team USA off the turnover. And Team USA changed direction. Shot and a save from Starr. Big shot there from Brian Brown. But Starr, again, really made some nice saves here early. Yale with possession now after and the push on Team USA. And it looked like Pula might have gotten a piece of that on the closeout, which God bless him for stepping in the way of Ryan <laughs> Brown's shot. Yeah, Ryan Brown really had a chance to wind up on that one as well. Um, right now Yale's got Dan and Jealous out there, Sessa. And Ty, and uh, running on right now is number 46, uh, Brendan Rooney. There's Sessa. Jackson Morrill, the pass from behind the cage. Good defense there from Team USA. Nice job by Will Haas. Jackson Morrill is going to restart it for uh, Yale, who keeps possession. He wraps around, passes in the middle. Oh, great break up there from Team USA. Good defense on the spot there. That was Matt Dunn with a long stick. Almost Team another fine there of Brandau on the crease. You're seeing a real chemistry develop between Morrill and Brandau. Yeah, Matt Abbott in transition drops it off to Earhart. Team USA trying to get organized now on offense. Matt Abbott known as the human clear going back to his Syracuse days where you could just drop it on the end line, let him take it and run, and, and you've got yourself a success. Connor Kelly on the field now for Team USA, has the possession of the ball. Coming in, uh, Michael Chen and Chuck as well. It's Team USA, their first, uh, their second possession, I should say, of this uh, quarter. Here comes Connor Kelly. Shot blocked, and again, Yale sacrificing. Team USA will keep possession down there. Marcus Holman with a quick start. And a shot and a goal. No, from Brown off the side, rather. Oh, Ryan Brown just a little wide. Yale with a clear. Coulter's going to drop it in. What you're seeing here is a Yale team that has had a chance to play as a unit, if not for that long, for a couple of weeks. But there's some familiarity there where the U.S. is still trying to get its bearings. Ted Forrest out there now for Yale. Then, of course, uh, Sean Cutton there who lost possession. Team USA is going to come up with a loose ball. Now in transition, it's Team USA. Right now, Will Haas, excuse me, make that uh, B.J. Grill with the run there for Team USA, the long stick. Grill was a guy who really impressed me throughout the tryout process for the U.S. team. Did not play for the Outlaws this summer, but he's a vocal presence back there. He's familiar with the defense of, of Marquette coach Joe Amplo, who's a defensive coordinator for the U.S. team. And, and he, he, he took a real leadership role within that unit. And so, again, it's good to see him back out here and a lot of these other guys who were not a part of that final group going to Israel having an impact on the program. Jake Fercaro just jump, dropped off the uh, pass there to Miles Jones. Jones dumping it in, shot, and saved again by Starr right on the doorstep. Marcus Holman was denied by Starr. <laughs> Yale with a clear, trying to get the clear now. Big time save for Jack Starr. 
Of course, the last time we saw him, he was making nine saves in the NCAA championship game. A win for Yale over Duke, lifting the Bulldogs to their first NCAA championship. No save more bigger than in the final minute on Justin Guterding. Yeah, John Donowski probably having flashbacks on the other sideline watching to do this again. Here comes Sessa. He's going to be held out there. Brendan Rooney. Oh, getting physical out there. Tana Jealous roller in the head, and we got a penalty. So we saw Sessa in an encounter with Miles Jones earlier, and now we see him going up against the MLL Defenseman of the Year, Matt Dunn. <laughs> and he's this, this he's kid, not shy, is he? This kid is just utterly fearless. He will not back down from any matchup. Jacob Richard going to the box, cross check for a minute. And uh, now Yale will have the man advantage. See what they can get started here. As they move the ball around, trying to be patient. It's Kotler out on the point. Kotler right in there, dropping it off. USA tightening it up defensively. Shot blocks. Deflection, but Yale will keep possession. That's a really nice job by Ty to find Morrill in the seam in the middle of that defense. Yeah, Sessa out there. See if you can see again. Big save there. Team USA. Phipps again. Nice job in the denying Yale's opportunity with that man advantage. Yeah, nice job by Phipps to deny Brendan Rooney on the doorstep. Rooney of Saskatoon, Canadian, probably want, wouldn't mind exacting a little bit of measure of revenge, revenge, <laughs> excuse me, on this U.S. team. A molecular physics and biochem major, so not an underachiever by any stretch. <laughs> not many, uh, I would imagine. At, at, if, to get into Yale, you can't be. Connor Buzik with a goal. Just like that, Team USA on the counter after a break, killing off that one-man advantage. Some people thought Connor Buzik had a real shot at being on that team in Israel, and it's because of team plays USA like this. He can stretch a defense with his legs. He can do it with a booming outside shot. Think about a unit that has Connor Buzik at, on one end, Ryan Brown down low. Defense cannot shade in one direction or the other. Music with a goal there, giving the 3 2 lead. Here's some stats that mattered for Team USA and Israel. Look at that. 65% of the goals were assisted. That was about the selfless play that Coach Janowski spoke about uh, in the pregame with us. The assist, uh, second assist, 25%. I mean, they were doing a lot of good things playing, as he said, checking the egos at the door. Here's Batiste right off the faceoff, and he's going to take it all the way and score. So just like that, Team USA, a little 2 0 run here in the second quarter. Team USA goals Trevor Baptiste, Baptiste, not a one-trick pony by any stretch. He was just competing last weekend for the U.S. indoor team in the LAX All-Stars North American Invitational, and you see a little bit of his handy stick work. Taking it to the rack, brings it inside, increases his angle by bringing his stick just across his face and finishes the goal. That, that had a little box feel to it, you know, the way sure he did. brings his stick across his body. He's been playing in the in the U.S. Box League and and in Colorado while in his time in Denver playing for the Colorado team and he's shown it in his stick work. Fowler now with a clean uh, win, drops it off Pat, shot and no, little wide there and that was uh, an opportunity for Will Manny, but good win from Fowler as Team USA tries to get started quickly. But a quick timeout uh, from Yale to kind of reset themselves here. The Team USA seems to all of a sudden have burst. A burst here. Well, they're getting into a little bit of a rhythm on faceoffs. They've now won six of eight against TD Erlin because, let's face it, Erlin can't do it on his own. We mentioned that Yale is dealing with tons of attrition yeah. in its long poles. And, and so the, the wing play is a big part of winning the faceoff. And so what they've had to do is now convert some of their short stick D middies to long pole. And, and what you're seeing is a lot of ex inexperience on the wings and, and Team USA exploiting that. Yeah, so far they certainly have. Yeah, eight poles is what they're down to right now. We spoke to Andy Shea about this. And 
What a uh, tenure Andy Shea has had since coming to Yale. Uh, you know, nine Ivy League tournament uh, appearances. You got six NCAA appearances. You got five Ivy League tournament championships, three Ivy League regular season titles, and, of course, now a national championship, uh, you know, the first in school history for, for lacrosse as an NCAA championship, although I guess they shared a college one, what, in 1883? <laughs> but uh, the first one, obviously, is an NCAA championship this past season. Yeah, what a magical run for the Bulldogs to that title. And and really it goes back to some subtle changes that Andy Shea made in the program four or five years ago. And there were some really, really instrumental players in that group that set the stage for last year's Yale team to, to be, team to be successful. Yeah, and we'll, we'll hear for, more from Andy Shea at halftime about some of those things that we're talking about. It's very interesting. Uh, some of it he can't share with us, all of it. <laughs> but what they're doing obviously works. You can see the fitness level of this team and uh, certainly the way you know they were national champions last year. And even with the loss of the best player in uh, lacrosse in Ben Reeves, they, they still are a team that's going to be to reckon with this year and probably one of the favorites to win the national championship and repeat. Yeah, six players set a record uh, for – you know, professional players drafted out of one class. Yeah, and when you talk about that pure athleticism, that group embodies it. Jason Alessi, a two-sport star. Ben Reeves, of course, the Tawarton Award, award winner a year ago, was in the mix for this U.S. team for a little while there. But, you, you know, this, this is a group that you cannot replace. Although, again, Connor Mackey, you see him there, the face-off specialist from that team, picking up a guy like T.D. Erland that can seamlessly fit into that culture is a big grab. For the Bulldogs. All right, Team USA with possession out of the timeout. This is for Caro for Team USA. Probin passing it back out to a uh, good save there by Miles Jones. A little, little bit of a high pass from the wing there. That's Jacob Jojo Morasco. Going to drop it off to Miles, who takes a shot and save again by Jack Starr. One of the things we learned about Ben Reeves in our call with Andy Shea earlier this week was that he ran a 3.94 20-yard shuttle, which, for comparison's sake, would have been number one in the NFL Combine this year. Right, so. that's laser time, too. It's not like the coaches were holding the watches. It's laser time, so uh, no stopwatch uh, you know, bias there from a, from a coach or something like that. So that was, that's a pretty serious athlete right there. And Andy Shea, he always has the metrics at hand. You know, that's he a does. big part of what they do is measuring their players and their performance. Forced there. Drops it off. Jackson Morrill back to Forced. Yale's trying to get something going offensively. Good pass. Sessa. Shot. Big save there. What a save. We're going to get a penalty. Big save there from Brian Phipps once again on the spot. See some good work from the goaltenders so far. Yeah, some big time saves from Phipps. Ball almost squirted back into the goal. So Team USA is going to be down a man again. Muller with the slash. And boy, Sessa, you know, 5-5. Five, five. Don't let that fool you. He really got some torque behind that shot. No question. That's Again, that's kind of a good penalty for Dunn down there in the sense that there was a, there was a scramble in front of the cage and and you're just trying to clear it one way or another. Yeah, with a man advantage now, it's Jackson Morrill. Dropping it off. There's Ty. It's caught right on the top, and there's their goal for Yale. Oh, the man advantage. 4-3 game now. That's Jack Ty with the bullet from just inside the restraining line. Scored 35 goals a year ago. He was a third-team All-American. And again, in the absence of Ben Reeves, who's going to be that go-to guy for Yale? Ty beating the rotation of Michael Earhart, getting that shot off just in time to make it a one-goal game. Big shot from Ty there makes it the uh, one-goal game. And, well, we have a quite a... Looks like we're going to have a clean win for uh, Team USA with a faceoff for a second, but Yale picks up the loose ball. Yale now. An opportunity to try to equalize this game with 3.37 to go in the first half of play. Here the Yale sideline getting everybody set for what they're going to try to do here offensively. 
There's Jack Ty, who just scored the goal a moment ago for the Bulldogs out there on offense. Along with Rooney. Ty, of course, also had three Brandon. goals in that NCAA championship win over Duke. So uh, coach, U.S. coach and Duke coach John Donowski again getting some flashbacks to what this Yale team is capable of. <laughs> yeah, probably didn't want to remember that. <laughs> you, got, you got Ty with the shorty on him. That's Abbott trying to hold him out. Good recovery defense from Team USA there. Tevlin, 12 shot and wide from uh, Yale, and they will keep possession. Jackson Morrill is going to pick it up, try to get a quick restart here. Good defense by Matt Dunn on Morrill. Pretty physical game here so far for fall ball. And it'll Team USA now on the break. Jacob Richard is going to dump it off. Pass Holman with pass and a shot and a big save again from Starr, who denies Will Manny on the doorstep. How about these goalies today? A beautiful no-look feed from Holman to Manny on the doorstep. And Starr denies him. Good job, Jack. Jack Ty Good job, Jack. brings it across for Yale. Going to try to get reorganized here on offense after their goaltender again has come up big for him. Yale brought some fans with him today. I don't know if you've picked up on that with our field mics. Yeah, traveling well. Jack Starr with seven saves already for the Bulldogs. Phipps with six for Team USA. So both goalies doing their part in this game so far. Yale again trying to get look for an opening here on this Team USA defense, which has been pretty stout. There's Sessa. Being defended by the short stick, Haas. Will Haas was the unsung hero of that group in Israel. Thomas Bragg now out there for Yale. Shot and uh, again, easy save for Phipps. Team USA now with a clear. Here they are in transition. And that would be Matt Abbott, number three, dumping it off. Shot from Holman and saved again by Starr. Goalie duel going on here. Sure do. Assessa coming the other way is. Yale's now going to get on some fresh fresh legs out there. Ted Frost is going to come out. It's eight saves for Starr, seven for Phipps as we closed in within the last 30 seconds here in the first half. Jackson Morrill being defended out there by Matt Dunn, Team USA, once again. Now he's got the short on him. Will Haas in front of Morrill. Oh, big interception there. That's the end of the quarter. That's the way we're going to go. Matt Abbott seems to be okay. Fell kind of awkwardly there on the wet turf. But Team USA up 4-3 to three here at the half. We'll hear from the uh, coaches coming at the halftime. Uh, you're watching uh, Team USA and Yale here at the 2018 U.S. Men's Fall Classic on U.S. Lacrosse. Keep up with the latest happenings in the world. Our primary goal is to positively impact every child exposed to the sport. If they're having fun while they're learning, that's what it's all about. Today, we're going to put it all together. Let's go out and continue what you started. It's having the opportunity to now inspire the next generation. I mean, that's the dream, right? Why do we do what we do? Well, we believe that participation in lacrosse positively influences lives. We believe lacrosse should be open to all kids that want to play. We believe in a future that offers everyone the opportunity to participate. 
U.S. Lacrosse is a nonprofit organization that provides resources to fuel the sport's growth and development. Support, Support our, our efforts, efforts at, at uslacrosse.org. Welcome back here at the half. Scott Jackson, Matt DeSilva, and Yale coach Andy Shea. And uh, got to talk to Coach a lot this week, getting ready for this uh, matchup. And one of the interesting things you share with us is the unique way Yale trains their athletes with, with lacrosse and how it is special to your university. Could you share that with our audience? Yeah, I think our strength coaches, uh, headed up by Tom Newman, um, you know, do a really phenomenal job of getting our guys in a position to succeed in our sport, you know. And I think that um, our guys understand the expectation that, that you know, overarchingly they gotta they got to get – a lot bigger and faster and it's been it's been something that we've put a lot of stock into and, and I think the guys have, have run with it. It's one thing to commit to strength and conditioning, it's another to see it validated in the form of a national championship. Right. Was that the case last spring and are guys really embracing that this fall, maybe even more so? Yeah, I'd like to think so. I mean that's that's what what we can point to and what people talked about is is our size and speed. Um, you know we're hoping that it wasn't an outlier in their roster at that point in time, and, and our guys have, have worked very hard in the offseason. So I think they're probably uh, a little buoyed by the by all the um, focus that's been on our strength conditioning. So, um, but you know, we'll see. We will see what happens. You know, when we get out on the field, it certainly helps. Sorry, Scott. It certainly helps when the best player in your program's history was at the top of those charts last season right and ben reeves there's no doubt about it and he was you know he came in you know smaller and and relatively uh unexplosive and uh he worked really hard to get gain a lot of weight and he was you know maybe one of the fastest dodgers in the country last year so um that's great when you're when your best player and your captain guys can look to him and say this the, these are the strides that he made you know, that goes for Tyler Warner and all those other guys, you know, Connor Mackey and Jerry O'Connor, Chris Keating, all those guys that graduated last year, um, really, really validated the entire process. So there's a Facebook group that they have to check in on their food, too, and everybody has to approve it? Is that true? That is team run. Wow. Uh, yeah, so it would be a violation if we had anything to do with it. Okay. Um, I would love to take a look in there <laughs> and uh, and make sure guys are doing it, but it's something that they've done and, and they run with it. Um, you know, we, we have nothing to do with it. Um, we do give them guidance and sure. nutrition and stuff like that, but they're very focused and motivated. And, uh, you know, I think it helps develop our leadership when they've got things like that that, that, that they can run with. So, um, and it's not me. It gives me a little more gas in the tank to yell at them when the time comes, I guess. Well, Coach, uh, worked obviously very well in 2018. Hopefully the more of the same for you guys in 2019. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Yo, Coach Andy Shea with us here at the half. At the half, Team USA on top of Yale, 4-3. to three. More halftime coming up on U.S. Lacrosse. Our primary goal is to positively impact every child exposed to the sport. If they're having fun while they're learning, that's what it's all about. Today, we're going to put it all together. Let's go out and continue what you started having the opportunity to now inspire the next generation. I mean, that's the dream, right? Why do we do what we do? Well, we believe that participation in lacrosse positively influences lives. We believe lacrosse should be open to all kids that want to play. We believe in a future that offers everyone the opportunity to participate. U.S. Lacrosse is a nonprofit organization that provides resources to fuel the sport's growth and development. Support, Support our, our efforts, efforts at, at uslacrosse.org. at the half our pleasure to uh, bring in United States coach John Donowski and of course uh, this is just part of the steps here right uh, getting getting back on the field and building towards the next go around uh, what kind of timetable we're we looking at and what, when do the decisions really start to be made well it's uh, you know the first time we did this uh, and it was the first time for all of us who were involved it was a it was a two and a half year process 
and that first January of 16 when we were in, when we were in Florida at the IMG Academy uh, there were actually 14 guys who made the team and and the idea was to create a culture and to develop a team not have an all-star team and that was really important to us uh, to myself and to uh, to our coaching staff everybody everybody was on the same page and um, and I think that you know four years out is long um, guys are you know they're professionals in other areas some of them coach they're gonna get married they're gonna move on their wives are gonna tell them nope <laughs> it's time to stop playing um, because they do this for the love they're not doing this for the money uh, there is no money for them um, they're doing it because they love the game and they love to compete at this level um, and so you know a lot of things are gonna happen over four years two and a half years was still a bit of a guess but it was it was much easier to manage Coach, when I look at the 24-man roster here today, what strikes me is all but two were a part of the process the last time around, including many individuals who were not part of that ultimate traveling group that went to Israel. What does that tell you that they're here representing the USA today? And that was the goal. The goal was um, U.S. lacrosse really allowed us to continue our vision of, of having a team, and it really was a 46-man team. When we broke last January, uh, the idea was when we broke from the IMG Academy, we announced the travel team, so the guys had plenty of time to prepare. And so we, we announced the 23, but we said to the other 23, you are still part of the team. And so this is now their opportunity to continue. So um, what we've been teaching offensively, you know, some of our defensive techniques are not going to be brand new to them. And, and so, you know, the hope is that this is the basis for the next group. Uh, and as we both know, there'll be plenty of players who are in college right now, juniors and seniors, you know, who will have a real shot to make next year's uh, or next next cycle's team. Well, it'll be exciting to watch it all unfold. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, U.S. lacrosse, and, and the guys who represent uh, U.S. lacrosse uh, deserve so much credit. I think the one disappointing thing about last summer, you know, it just wasn't in the mainstream. I mean, you've got 23 dedicated, 46 dedicated, you know, athletes um, who represent our sport, represent the United States so well, uh, and they're gentlemen. Uh, they're professionals, uh, they coach, they teach, they're fathers, they're husbands. Uh, you know, these are great men. And, and uh, uh, I just uh, wish and I hope that as we go forward, they'll continue to get recognized for their contribution to the sport. We'll do our best. Thank you. All right, Coach, thank you. Let's look at some highlights here where Team USA is up 4-3. They got the first goal of the game, and that was Marcus Holman coming around the back there and uh, making the game a one nothing score, but it didn't take long for Yale to answer. The connection of the first half was Jackson Morrill to Matt Brandau. Really feeling it there in that first quarter on consecutive goals, the freshman scoring to put the Bulldogs up two to one. Jack Starr was a big part of this first half for Yale, did a great job between the pipes with some big saves, and Brian Phipps as well for Team USA. Both of these goalies acquitted themselves nicely. Here you see Miles Jones drawing the double, dumping it down to Matt Cavanaugh, takes that extra step and finishes, and Jones again dealing, but Jack Starr on Marcus Holman with the doorstep save. He had eight saves in the first half, Brian Phipps with seven, both goalies showing really well. Yeah, that goal there was uh, Connor Buzik, Buzik, and here is uh, Trevor Batiste off the faceoff. This was just textbook. Look at him come in there and beat Star High. Yeah, he faked everyone on that one. It looked like he was going to dump it off to Will Manny on the wing. Instead, he took it to the goal himself. Yeah, and then uh, Sessa with a big shot. But, boy, there was uh, Phipps right on the spot, as we talked about. Good good first half for both these goaltenders. But Yale yeah, would go a man up, and it's Jack Ty with the high heat, making it a 4-3 to three ball game, and then both goalies in the final minutes. Will Manny denied game. on the doorstep there by Starr. Then another one, Holman denied by Starr. So good first half for him. It'll be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I know that, look, this is exhibition. They're going to want to get in some backups here. We'll probably see uh, goaltender changes, at least uh, for Team USA for sure. We'll see if uh, Yale does the same or if they let Starr kind of ride it. He played every game but one last year. Uh, started every game but one for this uh, national championship team. There's uh, John Donowski, of course, the U.S. national coach, and oh yeah, the head coach at Duke. So he's got uh, some pretty good teams that he gets to coach. Uh, most wins in Division I lacrosse history. And of course, a lot of those wins came during his time at Hofstra. Look, he wasn't always, didn't always have this embarrassment of riches that he has at Duke. 
and and that's even an overstatement now. I mean, lacrosse being uh, you know still relatively sure. low budget sport in terms of what's happening at the collegiate level compared to football, basketball, and the like. But he built that reputation at Hofstra, and so it's great to see him with this U.S. team be able to reunite, reunite with his former assistant coaches Seth Tierney and Joe Amplo. Amplo, of course, played for him at Hofstra as well, and they, they call them the Turnpike guys, uh, Hempstead Turnpike, the, the site of Hofstra. And that was a it was a real pleasure to be able to spend that time with them this summer in Israel. Uh, Jack Starr is uh, staying in goal for Yale, of course, uh, DC uh, native, St. Albans High School, not too far from here. And then uh, there's going to be a goal change. Jack uh, Concanon is going to come in for uh, Team USA to play goal. And it looks like we're going to uh, get uh, TD Erline. Clean face-off win for him, for Yale, as uh, they start this half down 4-3. And speaking of Hofstra, we've got the Hofstra graduate, Jack Concanon, making his first appearance for Team USA in the goal. He's got tough shoes to fill after what Brian Phipps did in that first half. And it'll be interesting to see who winds up in this goalie conversation as the U.S. program moves forward. You know, John Galloway was a, was a real leader of that squad over in Israel. He's got commitments as the D Division One head coach at Jacksonville. And, you know, a lot can change in four years. Let's see who Ty comes loses up to the, the ball. Ty loses the ball there. And it's going to save it. Yale does keep possession. Good hustle there. Matt Brandau, of course, two goals in this first half, both in the first quarter. The freshman, again, Jack Ty, pushed out. It's Team USA trying to match up here defensively. Sessa still back in. Seeing a lot of the regulars here still for Yale. Again, this is uh, their, their first look at this team against other competition besides their own. Wide shot from Sessa, but Yale will keep possession. After a tough start, the U.S. defense has really settled down with its rotations. They're on point right here. Yeah, Sessa. Goal there, team, or excuse me, for Yale there was number 46, uh, Brandon Rooney. So Rooney able to tie this game up. Yeah, and again, good, good it's good pass by, by Jackson Morrill, who's got three assists now. It's Jackson Morrill again, wheeling and dealing. He is the centrifuge for this offense in the post Ben Reeves era. We saw him connect with Matt Brandau on a few occasions. Nice chemistry there, and of course, he's got some experience playing with Brendan Rooney, the Canadian finisher. Clean faceoff win for Team USA, and on the other end, shot and save again. Jack Starr, Will Manny, unable to beat Starr there. Chris Fake is going to clear it out for Yale as they now with the tie game look for their uh, first lead of this ball game. Manny didn't get much on this shot. It's almost as if he was maybe looking to, to fake it and, and feed off of it, but when he had the look, he took it, and Jack Starr saw it all the way. Yale now on the attack. Shot and goal! That one coming from Brian Tevlin. 5-4, Yale on top now here in the early third. Yale goals for number 12, Brian Tevlin unassisted. Brian Tevlin, second line midfielder. Wow, what a shot. With a shot on the run, gets a little elevation and beats Concanon. Tevlin... He played in every game last year, scored a goal against Duke in that championship game, so he has the experience, did so as did all that as a freshman. And so he provides some nice depth at that midfield unit. Whenever you can get that secondary scoring, it's a big lift for your program. 5-4, Yale's got its first lead, lead since early in the game. So Team USA able to get the faceoff after... Uh, it was, almost a, it was actually a face-off win for Yale, and then they're able to get it on the turnover. Good slow play, wide slow. Well, Team USA trying to get this game back to even. A lot of different personnel groups out there for both of these squads. It's Connor Kelly coming in for Team USA. Connor Kelly will be joined by Michael Chattanchuk, who has the ball now. Connor Kelly, Probin. It's doubled. 
Whips it across, quick to Holman, who shot save again from Starr. Marcus Holman denied once again from Jack Starr. Big hit. They say play on. Loose ball. Who's going to come up with possession? It's going to be Team USA and number 20, Connor Bozik. Jack Starr is playing some unconscious lacrosse right now, as we see. Yale's got a, a man limping off the field. Earhart now for Team USA for the like, offensive end. Looked like number 11, Jack Oaken, perhaps. Yeah, it did look like Oaken came off number 11. That's what I got as well. So Team USA now, Matt Cavanaugh's out there. Connor Kelly back on the field. Kelly's going to get checked out there by Dan and Jealous. Buzzick passes it to Holman, who oh, tries to get it under Star, who denies him again. Now here comes Yale on the counter. Will Wetzel, the long stick. Jack Starr just picking up where he left off in the NCAA championship game. USA having all sorts of trouble trying to get the ball by him in the goal. Jack Ty back on the field, number 18 for Yale. And these are high degree of difficulty doorstep saves against the best shooters in the country. Oh, Yale is going to turn it over. Oh. Unforced errors have been a little bit of the story here, too, for Yale. And again, just a handful of practices so far in the fall for them. So it's not to be uh, to be expected, I should say, that uh, you might have some of those. But I'm sure it still doesn't make uh, Coach Andy Shea very happy. Star now up to 11 saves on the day. And again, these are coming front and center. Miles Jones being... Uh, Defended aggressively. Oh, a little swoop move from Jones and passes it off. And another save by Starr. Are they going to call it a goal? Yes, goal for Team USA. Wow, that was quite a shot there from uh, Jake Fricaro. Just got it by Starr. Thought Starr initially had the save, scored it under him. And again, Miles Jones making it happen. Yeah, he was the top scorer for the Bayhawks. Actually led the team in assists. So you think of him as a volume shooter, but he's really become a phenomenal draw and dump presence. He gets it to Fracaro, and really, I mean, you thought Starr came up with another one. The ball just trickles behind him, and Team USA ties the game at five. Trevor Batiste back in the circle against TD uh, Erline, and it's going to be – or no, to make that – sorry, that was uh, – Wenderland in there, and it's a penalty on him, and it's going to be possession for Yale. Back to even here at five all. So that's uh, Joseph Sessa out there, and Jack Ty now with the ball dumps it in. Good passing from Yale, and a big save there from Kincannon. Jack and Cannon coming up big for Team USA. Denying one on the doorstep. He's a big, tall goalie. Tough for him to, you would think, to range low on the doorstep on Sessa. Again, we're seeing that disparity in, yeah. in, in heights in particular. It seems like Sessa is always in those positions, but good job to range low on that shot. No question about it. It's a big save there. Team USA now back on offense. You know, Will Manny out there coming on the field right now is uh, number 22. That is... Uh, Jojo Marasco, who's out there with Manny. Fricaro's out there. Jake Fricaro. Jojo Marasco still holding. Get some help there from Fricaro. Dumps off shot and wide from Will Manny. Here's Marcus Holman with a quick restart. Team USA is going to step into one there. Shot. Another big save from Jack Starr. What a save from Jack Starr. Denia Marasco. Look, and these might not be the highest percentage shots, and that, and that might be the message for this group, be it at a timeout. Uh, especially that's, you know, when you're looking at guys who could suit up for USA in four years, these types of empty possessions will kill you. But I think Starr's just making them think when they're releasing the ball. They don't seem convinced of where they want to shoot because he's been good all over. A lot of contact, no calls. So coming out of it, though, is going to be a Yale possession. Here comes Yale the other way. That's uh, Luke Eschbach with it, and they're going to 
keep possession. Brian uh, Tevlin is out there right now. Yale faithful here, kind of hoping for a whistle. 43 just comes in. That's Ted Forst, who's got possession right now for Yale as they try to get organized in offense in this five-all game. Jackson Morrill is out on the field right now as well. Eschback gets the ball back for Yale after losing possession briefly. There's Jackson Morrill. He's made a lot of uh, plays today, three assists already. Ball's loose again. It's anybody's ball, Team USA. Looked like they had a shot at it. They do. Tim Mueller with the possession there, although they having a hard time keeping a hold of it. Matt Dunn now across the field back to Mueller, and it'll be a clear for Team USA in the possession. Miles Jones bringing it into the offensive end for Team USA. Tim Mueller, former NCAA defenseman of the year. A key figure in that Maryland Terrapins team that won the NCAA championship two years ago. Connor Buzik, there's Connor Kelly. He thought about one. Instead, thought better of it. Holds off. Here's a shot from Team USA wide. Chanincock, Michael Chanincock. Chanincock, rather. A wide shot. Team USA keeps possession. It's Matt Cavanaugh for Team USA. Going to be Team USA with a shot, a little wide there from Puzik, and they'll keep possession. Will Manny being defended by Sean Cutton. Yeah, he's got the short stick. Cutton's going to get a screen for Manny too. Manny's the shot. It's a post. Good hustle from Yale, but uh, Team USA will keep possession there. A quick restart. Connor Kelly has thought about it. Good defense from Yale recovery. And the shot and goal from Team USA, and that's Connor Buzik with another one. Connor Buzik bringing the boom. One of the hardest, deadliest shooters in Major League Lacrosse. Showing you what he can do. Time and room, he is absolutely deadly. Nice job by Connor Kelly to give it up. Recognize that Buzik had that time and room and, and the finish. And boy, it hasn't been easy getting it by Jack Starr today. No, it hasn't. You're going to put it in the stick of your best shooters. So 6-5 Team USA here with 2.40 to go in the third. And clean uh, win for Team USA on the faceoff. Gerlinen, and he's going to shoot it. It's going to be denied. Or no, in. But Star came up with it first, and there you go. Right off the face off Team USA now. Off to a two-goal lead, 7-5. That's a big lift for this U.S. team. Brendan Fowler taking it to the house. An incredible athlete in his Duke days. Wrestled there as well. Wins the draw. Sees the daylight. Brings it back to his front side and beats Star and USA's got a little momentum going here. So Brendan Fowler with the goal, so it's 7-5 game now. Now Greg Gerline will be in the face-off circle, number 32. He does get a clean win. Also shot wide. Team USA, though, keeps possession. The Fogos having a ball out here today. Yeah, they really are. Big block there from Yale. Yale now with a clear. Going the other way. Oh, yard sale. Here comes Team USA in transition. Quickly getting it up, dumps it off. And an easy goal as Will Manny finds Matt Cavanaugh right in front of the net. Good teamwork from Team USA. Yeah, that's a nice job. Starting with Michael Earhart with the ground ball. That's what we saw in Israel for two weeks. Earhart, just a vacuum. And then it winds up with Manny, who finds Kavanaugh on the doorstep. Fake and finish. And all of a sudden, it's a three-goal lead for the U.S. So Joe Newman uh, going to take the face off this time for Yale. And 
It's going to be Brendan Fowler who won the faceoff earlier and scored to put Team USA back on top. And now they're on a bit of a run with 40 seconds to go in the first quarter. Fowler again controls. But an errant pass turns it over as Matt Abbott was unable to handle it. So Yale maybe will get one more opportunity here before the end of this quarter, trailing 8-5. to five. And again, T.D. Erlin and, and Joe Newman can only do so much when they're throwing Baptiste, Fowler, and Gurenlian at you in succession. Those guys are fresh and starting to heat up. Here's Sessa. Yale moving it around. Be a shot. And uh, good save there by Ken Cannon. Brendan Rooney, little errant shot. They're going to say uh, Team USA ball off of Yale last. That's going to about do it for this quarter as it's a heave downfield. The shot won't count as that's the end of the quarter. USA leads Yale by the score of 8-5. to five. We'll continue after this timeout on U.S. Lacrosse. Our primary goal is to positively impact every child exposed to the sport. If they're having fun while they're learning, that's what it's all about. Today, we're going to put it all together. Let's go out and continue what you started. It's having the opportunity to now inspire the next generation. I mean, that's the dream, right? Welcome back here to Turney Field, and we're going to look at Yale goalie Jack Starr from St. Albans Catholic in uh, Washington, D.C. He has uh, come up with some big stops today against a very explosive Team USA uh, squad, obviously, Matt De Silva. He's, he's been under siege, but he's, he's held pretty strong. Yeah, we mentioned that Yale is super short-handed on the defensive end, and so he's been really exposed today and risen to the challenge. Twelve saves through the first three quarters. Team USA was able to get to him a little bit there at the end and go on a little bit of a run, but, man, he's been holding it down. He really has. And, again, as you mentioned, the eight poles they come into the game with, you know, it's uh, it's not been an easy thing, but he's, he's kept it together. But you saw Team USA able to get on a run here at the end of his third quarter to open up the lead now to 8-5 to five after being a 4-3 uh, in the uh, in the at the half and actually even trailing 5-4 uh, in this quarter, but then went on that uh, 4-0 run. Yeah, I mean, Marcus Holman is probably going to shake – Jack Starr's hand after this game and say well done young man. Holman on a few occasions has been denied there on the doorstep and you know uh, it's it's a, a testament to Starr's ability. It's just a sophomore that Yale is within three goals here going to the fourth quarter. Well we come back uh, to action here. Joe Newman's going to be in the faceoff circle again for Yale. The freshman out of uh, Port Washington New York. We'll see who uh, Team USA rolls out there as we've talked about they get an embarrassment of riches when it comes to faceoff options. Jack Starr is going to stay in goal for um, for Yale. And why not? I mean, the way he's playing and, and the confidence that he can derive from this, we saw him really peak as uh, toward the end of the last season and, of course, ending with that phenomenal game against Duke in the final. And it seems to have carried right over to this fall. Jack Starr in goal and, and Chris Fake on the defensive end. Those are two guys you can really build around. Trevor Batiste is going to be in the uh, face-off circle for Team USA. Uh, Jack Kincannon stays in goal for Team USA here in this final quarter. With Team USA up 8-5, to five, and again, as we mentioned, uh, Newman, the uh, freshman. Joe, just go out there and face Trevor Batiste. Good luck to you. <laughs> He's not making it easy on Batiste. Yeah, I mean, this... This face-off society, these guys know each other. From the veterans right on down to some of these high school kids who are learning from them. And look at Newman going at look it with at Baptiste. This. Way to go, Newman. Well, we talked about Yale's strength and conditioning program, and it's fully on display here. Oh, and Yale looking for a penalty. They're not going to get it. Earhart has got it for Team USA, headed towards the goal, takes a shot and a goal. Earhart for Team USA. Michael Earhart makes it a 9-5 game. Team USA goal scored by number 28, MVP. This kid does it all for this U.S. national team. He lost 20 pounds going into that world championship, and it showed he was fleet of foot doing everything in the middle of the field. You see him just waiting, waiting, waiting his turn. Baptiste, good job to push, push Newman off the possession. 
and Earhart just taking off in transition. He scored two goals in the semifinal win against Australia when Team USA was struggling to find a rhythm offensively. He can inject that offense. Uh, was one of the top scoring poles alongside Scott Ratliff in Major League Lacrosse this year. Joe Newman and Trevor Batiste once again. It was so good last time we got a replay of it. Batiste is going to kick it forward. Ball still loose. Newman's going to come up with it for Yale. Oh, now he's going to get a penalty. He definitely uh, took one for the team there. But Yale keeps possession. Eventually, when the, they give up possession, it'll be for Team USA. But they got a chance here with numbers. Shot and a big save there from Kincannon. And, of course, Yale's about to go a man up here. Good fight from the freshman, though, Newman. Hello, Newman. <laughs> Joe Newman. He's being greeted on the sideline by his Yale teammates, and uh, they, they appreciate the work he just did out there against certainly one of the best in the face off circle, Trevor Batiste. Yeah, they're really, really letting him know how much they appreciate his effort. And how beneficial is it for him to come in as a freshman now and be able to learn from T.D. Erlin, sure. one of the best in the business. Right. Again, That's we mentioned point. Yale is really well set on face-offs for, at the face-off stripe now for a couple of years. Erlin only a junior. He's got Newman coming up behind him, and, and, and really Newman not backing down against some really tough matchups today. Some sort of delay here with uh, here we go, Blue. the restart, but it's going to be, again, Yale man up. Baptiste goes into the box after uh, the push. Kotler's out there for uh, Yale, also Sessa. You got Brandau out there, of course, there's a couple goals in this one, and uh, Rooney as well out there. Yale tries to get something going down here, nine to five right now in the fourth. Jackson Morrill said three assists already today. Yo, trying to be patient and smart with the ball here. Nice pass by Sessa, feeds it in. He's going to look. Shot. A little wide there. That was from Ty. But they'll keep possession. Yale still in possession. Job by the man down unit for U.S. to kill that penalty, keeping their rotations tight. Jackson Morrill looking for somebody to feed it to. Instead of hold. Here comes Sessa. They're looking for the short, and they got it. Cotton's got it. Collar's got it. Lucas Collar. He's got the short. They keep telling him to go again from the sideline. Good defense though from Team USA, keeping him out there. Well done by Matt Abbott. The shot from Jack Ty once again. Yale keeps possession. Dumping on this Jackson Morrill shot, and that's going to be too high. But again, possession from for Yale as they keep the pressure on Team USA here. Up a man. This US defense starting to tire after that man down. Now out here for a couple minutes now. That's that's it's good prep for them. I mean, this that's sure. what they're going to face in the international game. There's a shot from Cutler. It's going to be wide. There were some possessions in Israel where USA was on defense for five and six minutes at a time. Absent the shot clock, it's important to have that endurance. Jackson Morrill looking for somebody. We got another flag on Team USA. A delay penalty. Got laundry everywhere. Sessa couldn't keep the possession, but that's... Obviously, stoppage for the penalty. Let's hear what it. Tucker Durkin's going to go out for Team USA into the box. Durkin out there laying lumber <laughs> as he is known to do. A punishing presence. He's getting called for the slash, and Yale's going to regroup here for another extra man possession. Yeah, down 9-5, they, they need some goals here. And here we go on the restart. It is Yale trying to get something going on offense. Yale with a change in goal. Jack Starr coming off. What a performance for the sophomore as his teammates greet him on the sideline to let him know how well he did. Yeah. He Looks sure like did. Hoyt Krantz in goal. Well, there you go. As I'd say, they need to get the offense going for Hoyt Krantz, and they do. Like Matt Brandow, he's got the hat trick. And again, it's Jackson Morrill finding his man. There is some real chemistry developing here. 
between Jackson Morrill and Matt Brandau. Morrill from behind, Brandau slipping through the seams and finishes to the opposite pipe. Well done. Three goals for Brandau. Yeah, it's Joe Newman sticking it out at Yale. He's going to be taking the faceoffs, it looks like. Uh, and Greg uh, Gerlinline is going to uh, be the man in the circle against him right here. It's Gerenlian. Gerenlian, uh and Newman. This is like another, <laughs> another <laughs> repeat of what we saw against Baptiste earlier. And the beast. Gerenlian in there, <laughs> unrelenting. And we're just going to sit here and we might, see uh, what shakes out. <laughs> might run out of time. 9-6 game with 8.40 and counting going. Joe Newman, the freshman, getting a trial by fire here. Renly just sitting on it, and he, he, keep, he finally gets it up for possession for Team USA. <laughs> Gerenlian just three years removed from an MLL MVP campaign. The only face-off specialist in the league's history to win that honor. And of course, a sort of Don Quixote of the position through the face-off academy, going around the country and instructing that next generation of players, including his own teammate now, Trevor Baptiste. Miles Jones is about there, dumps it off. There's a shot there and another goal from Team USA, Ryan Brown. Well, they baptize the uh, new goaltender, Hoyt Crane. Hoyt Krantz, rather, for uh, Yale with a goal. And that's a tough spot for Krantz to step into here. I mean, this U.S. team has been frustrated all day by Jack Starr. Starr comes off, head held high, and here Krantz has to come and deal with the, uh, the backlash of that, and U.S. starting to get its feet under it. And, and, and Ryan Brown, of course that time you know he can bring it so hard from the outside once he takes something off of it he kind of catches you unexpectedly Brandon Fowler this time against Joe Newman well they're sending everybody at Newman he's a strong kid just a freshman he's been some of the longer face-offs we've seen today involving Newman ball squirts out it's going to be possessed by Team USA and that's Matt Abbott And if Team USA does indeed pull away for the win here, lots of moral victories for Yale. Well, certainly lots of stuff, uh, you know, that Coach Shea can, can emphasize. And as he said the other day, can beat them up for a little bit. <laughs> so that's good. They need to find out, you know, some weaknesses. And they, need to, they need to work on them. And it'll be good to have the film. You know, we were talking about the freshman Joe Newman and at the faceoff acts. And you know what? That, this is great experience for him. In Team USA... So they just get on these spurts, you know, for a while in this game. It'll, it'll be close, and Team USA goes in a little bit of a spurt. Got to like what you see out of the Yale freshman, Matt Brandau, three goals today. Jackson Morrill wheeling and dealing. A lot of good things to take away from this game for Yale. Will Manny dumps it off. Shot from Connor Kelly and a goal. Will Manny with the assist to Connor Kelly. That makes it 11-6, Team USA. In this Team USA Fall Classic a year ago, you could have made the case that Connor Kelly was the best player on the field. Then, playing for Maryland against his U.S. teammates. Really, really showing well. And he brings that versatility that you need in the international game. He could play attack. He could play midfield. He's got Tom Schreiber-like vision. And there he shows he can also finish the ball. All right, TD Erline is back out now for Yale. Going to take the face off against Trevor Baptiste. This is, of course, where we started the game with these two. They saw each other last year in the NCAA tournament, Albany and Denver. Not quite as intense as that <laughs> encounter was with these two. Ball still loose. It's Will anybody ever possess it? It's... Still on the ground, a lot of fighting going on for this loose ball. It looks like Team USA is going to come out there with it. A oh, nice nifty pass from the pole from Team USA, and that's Tim Muller now headed over. Matt Dunn, Matt Dunn with the behind the back clear off of that scrum. Difficult play, and he finds Muller in stride. 
We got a timeout. Team USA wants to get a little organized here. Maybe uh, set something up here for the final 444. Want to uh, thank our sponsors who have made this possible, like Cascade Nationwide, Sweat Sport, Greenfields Sports Turf Systems, MedStar Health, Sisu, and Pearl, the official U.S. lacrosse ball. A lot of entertaining game. I think the fans have enjoyed it, Matt. It seems like uh, a lot of a lot of highlights, obviously, and uh, a lot of fun uh, lacrosse to be seen so far today at this uh, USA Falls Classic. So we get a look at the uh, world team from uh, over the uh, summer, and obviously well represented by Team USA and Team Canada, who of course met in the uh, championship game. Rob Pennell, Ryan Brown, of course uh, Tom Schreiber for Team USA as well as. Michael Earhart, who's here today. Yeah, and, and you know, for the silver Graham medalist Graham. Canadian team, you're seeing a couple of uh, up-and-coming defensemen and, and Graham Hosack and Rylan Rees, who, who should backstop that program for several years. So Canada not going anywhere, that, and that rivalry is sure, surely to continue to, to entertain us. This is uh, the play before BJ, was it BJ? No, it wasn't BJ Girl, sorry. That was uh, Matt Dunn who flipped it out here <laughs> to Tim Moeller. What a play. Yeah, Dunn dealing with all sorts of traffic and uh, just shoes it away with that behind the back Seemed like pass. that ball didn't want to be picked up. Uh, it was squirting around all over the field, started the faceoff circle and ended up deep in Team USA territory. All right, Team USA after the timeout. Jake for Caro out there. Joe Morasco out there as well. Team USA is there trying to work some offense. Miles Jones, who's made some nice assists here today. Joe Joe Morasco dumps it off. Shot high and denied. Jake for Caro. Good job by Hoyt Krantz there. Hard to believe for Caro. He was actually cut loose by the Bayhawks in the MLL this summer. He's someone who might benefit from the additional playing opportunities with a, with a new professional league rumored to be coming. Paul Rabel starting his own league. Team USA will keep possession despite the hustle from uh, Krantz. See Jojo Marasco out here as well. Another one who's been kind of buried behind a logjam of midfielders with the New York Lizards. So good to see these guys getting some burn out here. Talented, talented players. Matt Cavanaugh. To Will Manny. Will Manny's thinking about it. Dumps it off. There's Cavanaugh. The shot a little wide. And good hustle from Yale to get the ball back with 317 and counting to go. Trailing 11 to 6. Kavanaugh is, Kavanaugh is another one of those guys that was on the bubble for the U.S. roster for Israel. And of course, he represented the U.S. U-19 team several years ago, was an MVP of the, that world championship, and I'm sure he'd, he'd love to suit up for the USA in an international venue again. Here's Joseph Sessa. Been very active today, taking some shots too. Jackson Morrill, four assists in the game so far for Yale. Yale trying to get some offense going here. There's a shot from you. Shot and a goal from the Bulldogs. Matt Brandow, that's number four for the freshman. What a start. There's that connection again. Jackson Morrill to Matt Brandow. We could be seeing this over and over again this spring. Again, the chemistry with these two. Morrill takes the redirect, sends it back up to Brandow, finds his man, and with a quick finish, Matt Brandow. Welcome to the show. Certainly unafraid to perform on this large stage. He's been terrific today, and uh, Joe Newman's going to get another crack at it against uh, Brandon Fowler from Team USA. And here we have another do -si do Yeah, we're under two minutes left in this game. Let's see if they can get it out before the one-minute mark, and they do. Team USA, or excuse me, uh, Yale with possession. 
trailing 11 to seven. Jackson Morrill again, trying to make some things happen. For this offense, Jack Ty back in. He's got the short on him, he's gonna go. Like he was gonna go, they, they're telling him to go on the sideline. There's Ty fighting through it with a shot, denied. Possessions kept, thanks to Bragg. Danagelis, John Danagelis, he's gonna get some help from Jack Ty. Will Haas defending Ty. One minute to play in regulation. Just a minute left in this game. Shot and uh, wide from Yale, good hustle for the Bulldogs to keep possession. Jackson Morrill unable to get much on that shot. Thomas Bragg behind the goal. Bragg, we're getting a look at the six foot four, 200 pound freshman. Yeah, he is tall. <laughs> They're yelling big Bragg from the sideline, you can see why. Team USA with the loose ball, picks it up. That's number eight, BJ Grill. He took a shot in the grill too. So he's gonna hold the ball. 30 seconds to go in this game. See so what Team USA just be happy to uh, run the clock out here. As they uh, move the ball around. With that 11 to seven lead. Team USA gonna get one extra in there. And that's gonna come from Matt Cavanaugh. It's gonna make it a 12-7 uh, score with 3.9 seconds left in the game. And that's a hat trick now for Cavanaugh. Taking advantage of the, the attention that Connor Busick draws on the wing dodge, the cross crease feed, the quick finish to give the US a five goal lead. So as we uh, mentioned coming into this thing, look, there was a lot of things both these teams wanted to learn about their squads. Obviously, in Yale's case, they got a season ahead. They're, they're missing a lot of people right now at the polls. But overall, you know, Coach Shea obviously has some teaching points off of this game, I'm sure, that he's going to stress as this group moves forward in the uh, fall season. No question. Obviously, a big-time performance by Matt Brandau. Jackson Morrill showing he could run this offense. Joe Newman showing he could provide some face-off depth. And even some of those polls like Douglas Pula really getting involved in the game, and of course, an outstanding performance by Jack Starr let's and the goal. At, let's look at some of the highlights of this 12-7 uh, Team USA win over Yale. And this is uh, early in the game. This is, uh, excuse me, the second half, Jackson Morrill. Yeah, Morrill was just dealing all day. That's Brandon time, Rooney. That time he finds Rooney. There's another uh, goal from Yale there. And here's some of the Team USA fancy pass in there. But again, Jack Starr was the big story uh, for a lot of this game for Yale to keep them in it. It was a great move, the crossover, if you will, from Miles Jones to set up this goal here. And a ball that we didn't know went in at first. It was, but uh, Joe Fercaro got it just enough on it to get by Jack Starr. Yeah, and that, that Starr really, was everywhere. That really got the U.S. going. I mean, they needed to find some way to beat Jack Starr, and they finally got through against him in the third quarter. And, and you know, you can only hold these shooters at bay for so long, and then the U.S. really got it going, especially off of the faceoffs. Yeah, I saw Fowler there off the faceoff. That was a big win for him. Then another uh, nice pass on the doorstep to Matt Cavanaugh, and there were uh, some big ones here. And here's Earhart off of the faceoff as well. The long stick just taking it to the house. Yeah, that was off that really long stalemate between Baptiste and Newman. Earhart takes advantage and takes it to the house. Here's some uh, more work from Yale here. And a goal from uh, Matt Brandau. Again, four goals from the freshman, whose grandfather, great-grandfather, and father all the lacrosse Hall of Fame right behind us here. That's actually Jackson Morrill, who has that family lineage. But Morrill and Brandau showing that they have a real connection out here for the Bulldogs. There's another and again, goal there for Brandau. Brandau from Morrill. I mean, those guys were feeding and finishing all day. Yeah, they sure were. But what a good display of uh, lacrosse here today. And, of course, uh, we're not done. We're going to have uh, United States women taking on James Madison here in a few hours. So uh, still a lot of good lacrosse to be played here at Turney Field today. No question. A really outstanding performance here by both squads today. Defending world champs, defending national champs. Doesn't get any better than that. No, it doesn't. And uh, big win today for Team USA, 12-7. Thanks to Matt DeSilva, Scott Jackson. Uh, be back with us at 3 o'clock when we bring you 
uh, coverage of the U.S. women taking on the James Madison Dukes. For everybody here at Tourney Field, so long until a little bit later on. Team USA 12-7 winners, thanks for uh, joining us here on U.S. Lacrosse.